Hey guys, how's it going? So today we're going to be working on both repotting some containers and flower bed maintenance. So that will include some shrub maintenance, uh, cutting back of perennials, and deadheading of bulbs. So we are at the church where Erin and I go, where we recently, was it last year? Last No, it must be two years ago. We uh, put the plants in this flower bed right here, and it's been such a nice area. You can see it's right in the front of the church. There's a little seating there. These rocks actually serve as seats as well. So this is the flower bed we're going to work in, and then we are going to redo these containers. <laughs> they've, they've seen better days. So this is a fluffy arb, which has totally grown really wide. There's some lavender in there from last year. I'm just gonna take everything out and we're gonna start fresh this year. And there's a second pot right over there. That arb looks really good. Like this one has quite a bit of like stuff I've had to trim off in the past and some winter burn. I think this one, well, definitely is more exposed. You can see it's out in more sun than that one. That one looks great. That one, we might find a spot to pop that somewhere. And you know, after your pots have looked the same for a couple of years, you kind of just want a refresh. You want them to look a little different. And the breeze is starting to die down. You can see it's a nice sunny day. It's gorgeous that way. But this morning, it was just so windy. We had 50 mile an hour winds last night. A lot of the trees that Aaron, Paul and I just got done planting were like leaned over because I wasn't watching the weather close enough. I didn't know we were supposed to get wind and we even talked about staking the trees and how we'll just get to it tomorrow. <laughs> well, we got to it today, that's for sure, but we had to kind of write a bunch of the trees back up in their holes. Uh, anyway, all that said, hopefully the breeze is okay and the audio's okay. So let's just do a walkthrough, see what everything looks like, and I'll kind of explain what I'm going to be working on. Starting right here in this corner, we do have some boogie-woogie sedum, which is just starting to come back. You can see the new growth, beautiful tricolor, creamy white, pink, and green. So we'll just take the rake and lightly clean the tops of these off, kind of like that, just to leave the fresh stuff. There's a couple of random weeds, not very many weeds at all, but we'll take care of those. For the life of me, you guys, I cannot remember the name of this barberry. They are doing fantastic. Barberries are not restricted in our area. I know they are in many states, uh, but they do not spread here. Uh, and this one is a beauty. Doesn't it look pretty contrasting these rocks? I just remembered, these are Sunjoy Mini Maroon. You can see these daffodils are done blooming. They looked really pretty. We're gonna deadhead them, so when we do that, We'll just take the stock all the way down and I'll probably use pruners, but you just pop them off like that and we'll leave the leaves. Those need to stay. They will absorb sunshine and send energy into the bulb and recharge for next year. So it's not until the leaves start to completely yellow and turn brown and fall over. That's when we cut them back to the ground completely for the season. Moving on, we've got Nepeta kind of scattered about to this whole flower bed. You can see last year's growth and you can see this year's new growth. So these are pretty easy. I'll come in with pruners and get anything that's, you know, too hard. But even just like a couple seconds and look how much better that side of the plant looks. So we'll really do a good cleanup job on those. Hyacinths still look pretty good. I'll probably leave those. I can smell them right now. A couple more Nepeta. We have some Panicum here, which they're usually a little bit later to break dormancy. So we just leave that alone. Uh, there are a couple hyacinths I will deadhead. Again, same as the daffodils just pop them off at the base these are already starting to yellow so we'll be probably cutting this foliage back before the daffs even maybe right here we have an oh so easy double red rose which really these require no maintenance if you didn't want to do anything to this you wouldn't have to but you see these old stalks from last year we'll come in and prune those out just to clean up the top of the rose there's really not that much going on there here is a fluffy arb we're going to give it another season i did bring fertilizer with me today uh, yeah, you can see they just, I've tried them several times and if they're too exposed, they tend to take our winds poorly. We just have such high winds. So I think these just need to be positioned. In fact, when we get that direction, I'll show you how gorgeous that one looks. Denim and Lace Russian Sage, we're going to be cutting this back to fresh growth down there and getting rid of all this top stuff. That will make this look better. This is a poly petite hibiscus. We're not going to do a thing with this. We've got another panicum right here and then a bushes lace Engelmann spruce, which is not looking great. We're going to replace that today with something that looks a lot more fresh. It didn't really take to its transplant very well. And you know what? That just happens sometimes. Sometimes you pop a plant in the ground, you give it water, you do everything you're supposed to do and things just shock and die. It's just kind of part of the, it's part of the process, honestly. And I'm thinking, you know, out of all of the things in this bed, this is the very first plant we are uh, replacing. 
that's pretty good. It kind of started to look poorly the first year. We gave it a second year just to see what would happen and we just got to get it out and put something else in there. Another Russian sage with more bulbs that we need to deadhead. And then we've got the Arctic Fire dogwood right here. You can see how nicely they have grown. There are three of them here. You can see the nice red bark on them just love them. There are two different ways you can go about pruning a dogwood like this because they do get the best color, the best color on their stems on new growth. So there is the easy approach, which every other year you can go in and cut them back to the ground. That's just kind of a, a no fuss, just go in there. You don't have to really look at the shrub. You just mow it down basically. Uh, in that case, you get fantastic new growth that first year with super bright color. It's bright the next year. And then you do the same process that third year, you cut it back again. Um, if you do it that way, the plant isn't a great one to use as a screen because you are kind of reducing its size all the time. The second way you can do it is you go in every year and you cut out a third of the old wood. Um, so we'll go in, which is what I'm going to do today because I don't want to take these shrubs all the way down this year. I might, I might do it next year. But if we take kind of a closer look at this, if you look at these branches down here, see how these are just kind of like blah, you know, they're okay. But you take a look at these up here, gorgeous. Look at the color. So we're going to go in and remove anything that looks old and more brown, more dull in color, and we're going to leave the really bright, beautiful growth. Another Russian sage and some hyacinths. And there's really just a few little rogue weeds here and there. No big deal on that front. Another Russian sage, another fluffy. This one looks a little bit better than the other one, but this side is the east side. This side, you can tell, takes the wind like that. And this side is showing more damage from that. So just keep that in mind. If you're in a really dry, windy climate, just protect it a little bit. We've got tulips up here that are just starting to bud up. Oh, it's gonna be pretty. There's a nepeta, another panicum. This is a bloomering dark purple lilac, which is all budded up and beautiful. And then at the very end here, we have another Russian sage, some daffodils, and a Celtic pride Siberian spruce, which really all we have to do, I mean, not shadow it here or shade it, we're just gonna go into our shrub rake and remove all these leaves, but isn't that beautiful? Oh, it's grown so wonderfully right here. I love the color and I just love the so it's soft. It's not prickly at all. It's gorgeous. I mean, it may be one that we can repeat like right over here. There's opportunity along here to do that. Okay, so here's the other fluffy. That one you can see gets more shade. Uh, it is trying to maybe grow out toward the sun that maybe wants a little more sun, but the fact that it's been more protected, I think it just looks a lot better. Let's look from this side right here. You can see it's bright color. Yeah, that looks good. With the pots, what I'm gonna do is dig the fluffies out and they'll go to a new home as well as the lavender that's in there. I brought some new potting so we're not replacing all of that soil in that whole pot, no way. <laughs> It would take a ton of soil and a ton of time right now. I'm gonna top them up. I brought, brought three bags per pot of potting soil and one bag of land and sea compost that will mix into the soil that's already in there. And then also some biotone starter fertilizer because we are gonna go in with another evergreen. It's a different type. It's a lot smaller. Um, and evergreens are nice in these pots down here because we do plant up uh, 10 other big pots that go around um, kind of this whole, parking lot area and we do big grasses and annuals and things but it's nice right up here by the front doors to have evergreen because then it's wonderful in the spring in the summer and then also in the winter time we can put lights on them and stuff so anyway yeah that's what the afternoon's gonna look like okay guys so you can see i've got a bunch of supplies in the back of the truck if you look further in i've got some really pretty plants that we're going to be putting in the containers i will go over all the stats and all of that when we are done but i think i'm just going to get everything unloaded and just take after it. So here we go.
right guys, all done. I love how it turned out. It looks clean. There's some color up here and the weather has improved. It's not quite as windy. Starting a little bit backed up from where we mainly work today because I put the fluffy Arborvita from that furthest pot, so the nicer of the two, right here. So there are three Carl Forrester Calamagratus ornamental grasses and they get like, oh, I don't know, three feet or so, maybe three and a half feet. And then there's a hedge of lavender here, a Concord, I think that's a Concord barberry. And it's just beautiful because I think uh, when the lavender flushes back, you know, it's kind of like that gray green, kind of like more of a blue tone. And then we've got the yellow, we've got the red, and we've got the green. Oh, so pretty. And we've got the evergreen interest in here now because all of this kind of goes away in the winter time. And this one had kind of a hole, but I faced it toward the lawn. See, it's kind of whoop, a little hole in the back there. But this is the main walkway. So, you know, if you're walking this way, it looks great. And if we turn around, not as great, but pretty good. Okay, and as we approach the main area, oh, I just think it looks so nice. Oh, especially the pots. Let's start there because I'm so happy with how these turned out. So green giant arborvita in the center, which has been shorn. And you can see like on the edges, like the little dried tips there, it's been shorn into kind of a cone shape there but I think it's a nice look and it's different. I mean, these pots were screaming for a change. They needed a fresh face. So uh, the arb in the center, which, you know, like I said, we can have here now through the summer and um, through the winter time. And then, you know, we can keep them in here for a couple years like the others, or we can pop them out and use them in the landscape, which there's plenty of opportunity in this landscape for evergreens. I surrounded it with a bunch of pretty things, starting with the one gallon hookahs. There are three of them. So one, to you can see this one really well in the shade isn't that pretty we've got uh, some creamy colored stock here which is perfuming the air and when the sun hits it and warms it up i i swear it perfumes even more it's even more fragrant and then we've got five golden creeping jennies which are kind of evenly dispersed around the pot and then blue pansies i really like this whole color combination it's very peaceful i like it too i was a little nervous because this fluffy was so nice and it was a nice like bright color over here and it was big and i'm always nervous in taking those kinds of things out of pots uh, because you know the stuff we put back in is never as big but oh the fresh the fresh look you guys I just love it okay i'm gonna go back to the start of this flower bed so i can kind of go in order so i started by cleaning up the hookera deadheading the daffodils i cleaned uh, most of the leaves out of the bed i didn't like get right up underneath those barberries because they're a little prickly but cleaned up the nepeta don't those look so much better the hyacinths still look good. Uh, deadheaded just lightly this rose right here. Uh, raked up underneath the fluffy. Cut back the Russian sage so that's what it looks like in the end. Didn't do anything except for fertilize that. Uh, planted the, this is called the blues. And it grows 8 to 10 feet tall and only 4 feet wide. And it will, you know, have this kind of like, <laughs> it's like a little sad uh, growth habit unless you stake it, which I'm going to stake it. I don't have the, my staking equipment. But if you stake that leader, it'll keep going up 8 to 10 feet. And it will have more of an upright tall with weeping branches off the sides. And that's the look that I want here. Not necessarily that, but you know what? These turn into really cool specimens if you leave them alone and let them do their thing. I mean, it would fill this area in and be really neat as well. I thinned out the dogwoods. They should be happy, I think. They were quite thick. So now they'll have plenty of uh, light and air movement throughout the canopy, the leaf canopy. The Russian sage cut back. Over here, another Russian sage cut back. Nepeta cleaned up did a general cleanup around, you know, the hyacinths and bulbs and things and around these. Got the leaves off the top of that evergreen. And then I deadheaded some of the daffodils. There's some color left. I just couldn't bring myself to deadhead them completely. When I was done cleaning up this area, I went through and fertilized, except for the uh, sedum and the Russian sage, which do not prefer to be fed, but I used Plantone on everything and sprinkled it around the plant and then went back through with my rake and kind of raked it in to the, you know, underneath the soil surface. And we're supposed to get rain, hopefully quite a bit at the beginning of this week. We had a little bit yesterday, like a sprinkling yesterday, but it'll help push it into the roots of the plants, but we should be good to go in this flower bed now. I love how the bulbs have come up in this bed though. The daffodils and hyacinths kind of stagger each other a little bit. And then the tulips are all butted up and ready to burst into color. And that is just so nice when you have that like succession of blooms happening throughout the season. Like that's the goal. And I love to see it when it's when it actually works. I also watered everything in. 
both pots and both evergreens that I planted, this pot needs to be leveled up a bit. But do you see that? There's a drip tube right around the base. So I don't wanna do that by myself. I feel like I might pinch that drip tube. All right, you guys, the wind is starting to come up a little bit, so I'm going to wrap it up. Plus, I need to run to the grocery store before I go home so that I have ingredients to make dinner. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and we will see you in the next one. Bye.